Let's see the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We have Dero Deemi, who is a former uh, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. He joins us as we look at the, uh, the possibility of having 24 or your lawmakers move to impeach the Deputy Governor over alleged abuse of office. Uh, you have some members of the Oyo State House of Assembly initiating an impeachment process against the Deputy Governor Raouf Ola, you know, uh, they made this petition known via, uh, you know, the plenary that was brought to the assembly at the time. Well, but we'll just get straight to it and, and share Mr. Dinro uh, Odeyemi's thoughts on this issue. Good morning, Mr. Dinro. Once again, thank you for joining us. Good morning. I'm happy to be with you this morning. What, what do you make of the situation right now in you know, your state? I mean, the impeachment process has been accused of, of fraudulent activities and a misbehavior. And a number of persons that are saying, hey, we're going to impeach him. Uh, it's quite unfortunate if we are finding ourselves in this kind of a crisis again. Because as a political party, we, won't, we wouldn't envisage that there will be a problem between the governor and the deputy. And it's quite unfortunate in the sense that this is not the first time this, con this kind of an issue is happening in your state. It happened before, during uh, Governor Ladoja and the late Governor Lawakala's era, whereby the, uh, the Ladoja was impeached and Lawakala was installed as the deputy. But in this case, what we are hearing it's about the impeachment of the deputy governor. And I think belonging to the same political family, PDP, one would have expected them to manage it, to marry themselves in such a way that there wouldn't be any crisis. But with my understanding of the old crisis is the fact that the deputy governor uh, pitch is tent with the APC, that's the, uh, the opposition party in the state. And what the House of Assembly are saying is that if you are going to APC, if you have declared that you have joined them, then you don't have any reason to be in the office. Whether this now constitutes an impeachment offense, is, I'm not a lawyer, is what I cannot say. If I were the governor or if I am a member of the House of Assembly, I would just allow him to serve his term and just let him go. Since he has signified his intention and the governor is, uh, has, uh, has made efforts to have another deputy come 2023, there shouldn't be any need for impeachment again or whatever. That's my thoughts. Mm. But um, a, a lot of other persons would say that if it has to do with the issue of having people to come, because but even though this is not the case that we have already in paper, uh, the issue here is the issue of misconduct, uh, uh, gross mismanagement of finances, and what have you, recklessness at the end of the day, abuse of office. But if it's anything to go by, uh, you know, with the fact that he's pitching his tent with another political party, there's been several cases of recent times, I mean, with uh, persons who have decamped, for instance, uh, you know, from one political party, the governor of uh, Cross River State, he used to be a member of the People's Democratic Party. Of course, he decamped to the APC. And then uh, there's been a lot of court declaration and judgments uh, regarding scenarios as this. And so um, one is wondering why we constantly have to have this particular situation. But leaving that aside, if you think about the issue of misconduct, should the law, is the law not very explicit about how this should be handled? I agree with you, but you know, I laid the premises just to let you know that there's no smoke, uh, there's no fire without smoke. And uh, what I've told you is the political angle to the whole issue. If, however, you want to charge the governor for uh, misconduct or investment or whatever, uh, we expect them to go through it in a legal way, in such a way that you not bring another issue of uh, you know, legality. If you're accusing someone, yes, you have to query him. He has to answer the query. Either you bring him to the house, or to the house of assembly or whatever. Go through the normal process and let's see what's going to be the end. But I know the whole thing is political. And you know we don't need it as a political party right now. That's why I'm telling you that it has more political undertone than the accusation they are leveling against the deputy. But whatever it is, it is still politics.
how do we get, how do we solve the issue? Because at the end of the day, it feels like we're becoming we're already having uh, a serious concerns about having individuals moving from one political party to another. I mean, for instance, you're you were elected under a certain umbrella or party, however it is, and then afterwards you move away. How how do we put a stop to all of this? Do you think it's necessary to end it or? Should people or individuals be allowed, uh, you know, to move from a certain political party, even after they've been elected under the party, to another party? It is not a policy or personal principle that I fancy at all. I don't like the idea of people not having a principle of staying with a political party. Waking up as a political party, sleeping as a political party, as a member of PDP, and waking up tomorrow to be regarded as a member of APC, it makes mess of our democracy, and I think uh, I'm not too sure if the new electoral law has taken care of that angle. Until we are able to get that right, we are not. We will be messing ourselves up politically because it's not right when you get a mandate from the political party and you now use that mandate to move to another political party. It should be condemned by all. But unfortunately, we have the electorate who are not even taking these things seriously because if they are, if I vote for you as a member of PDP and you now come to APC, definitely I'm not going to follow you. I follow my mind, and I follow the ethics of the or I, I follow my mind. And I will stay with the political party I believe is a political party I believe in their principle. But this is not the case with Nigerian politicians. They only move to, to political parties just because they want to contest elections or because they want something else. Once you are not satisfied in the political party, or even if there is a crisis, you stay within that political party and settle whatever is misunderstanding. Jumping fence or you know the campaign is not is not the solution because where you are moving to, there are more crises you are going to meet there. But unfortunately, this situation we are in Nigeria, I think there should be an instant law that will forbid anybody who has crossed from a political party to another to contest any election or to even participate in major activities of that political party for a period of two years. Maybe that will stop. Carpet crossing. Mm. But but do you think that that will stop carpet crossing if you have mentioned, uh, do we need extant law? You know, we haven't been very fantastic with uh, obeying laws. We have seen even those in the highest offices not respecting the law as they should to the letter. Uh, don't, don't you think that it boils down to the fact that we have political parties that do not stand for anything? So oh, I, I think the major problem is the people who are going to make this law, they know how to circumvent it because in the process of making the law, they are already planning how to violate it or how to evade whatever is going to be the punishment. That is why they are not being categorical to establish a law that will forbid anybody from you know, crossing to another political because they know they, they know within themselves that they are going to do it. And if this is the if the purpose of electing them as lawmakers is to make those laws that we put our democracy in the right path and stop making mess of all these carpet crossing. I think they will do it, but we still need that law. And I think it's not only our legislators, I think the judiciary should also assist in ensuring that, you know, they, they, they put a stop to it. We need the assistance of everybody, the judiciary, the legal, the NBA. If our legislators will not cooperate, there are, there are ways of you know, putting it on them that this, we need this thing for our democracy to go. Mm. So, uh, b being a stakeholder, I mean, you're uh, a former deputy national publicity secretary of the PDP, uh, and I'm sure that you're still a member of uh, the PDP. How would you say that this case should be resolved? What what would be the solution to all of this issue? Because you have also mentioned that this is more politically motivated than what we have on paper, which is gross misconduct and what have you. Uh, what, what do you think should be the solution to this issue right now? I want to believe PDP as a political party has too many issues at hand to handle. And part of the issue is the issue of the vice presidency well, unfortunately, we seem to have connection issues with uh, DRAW, DME, and uh, as soon as we're able to establish contact with him, we'll definitely return and continue this conversation. We're also hoping that we have a legal practitioner join us soon so we can look at the legal implication uh, of all of this. Please stay with us.